Hello YouTube and welcome to a new series on the channel today. We're going to be reacting to episode 1 of Katana Gatari. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. We're, we're going to be doing that. Normally I have a second part to say, like part of a series or something, but not really here today. Just going to watch episode 1. So if this is your first time watching a video on the channel, hello, hi, I react to anime. And I like to do it in a little bit more of a thorough sense, at least I like to think so, uh, where I'll go through the episode after the fact and talk about it in some detail, make some predictions, review it before moving on. We're not just going to be watching the episode here today, there's going to be significant content after the fact. Because that's the way I like to do things, even, <laughs> even if it is tedious sometimes. But I digress. I should give some context. I had a poll on the channel. This is the show that won the poll. Put the poll results up here in post. It won in a very, very close battle. Probably its closest rival for it was, uh, was Flip Flappers from memory. And so, I mean, this one. So we're watching it. That's how this normally goes with polls. Normally the, the, the winner moves on. But I should also mention the show that it was replacing, which was the, the Monogatari series. So... It's got some explicit ties to Katana Gatari in a way that I'll explain here in a minute. It's not like this is a huge departure from what I was doing before. Or maybe it will be. Again, we're going to have to see. So whenever I start a new show, I like to talk about expectations and what do I think of it and looking at the, the key visual and all that jazz. Oh, as well as looking into the staff, of course. We can't forget the staff, even though I had a little look already. It's a little bit of a weird one. First things first, the title, uh, Katana Gatari. This one's not hard. I know what katana means, and I know what gatari, after a after a you know noun like that means generally, <laughs> according to Nisio Asin. Again, it's kind of weird. Um, sword story. This is a story about a sword. I, we we've gotten this far. It's, I expect to see a sword at some point here. That is the goal here today. Uh, other than that, not much. I mean, sometimes there's some weird plays on what that word means in context with the other word. Listen, it's not always what you think it means initially completely, if monogatari is any indicator. So I'm open and available to changing my mind on it just being sword story. That's what I really want to get across here. Now let's talk about that staff. I had a window of ANN here somewhere, yeah. Uh, and I've already had a little bit of a look through. Ignore this stuff. I'm not even looking at it, really. Uh, first, we have the director, Keitaro Motonaga. Here he is. He looks, he's looking very happy in that picture. Uh, but I already had a bit of a scroll through here. Not really much. Not really much. Um, I've seen all of Data Live, and he directed Data Live, so that's something, right? <laughs> For the record, it wasn't that bad. I didn't mind Data Live. Uh, this is a connection between a lot of the staff members. Is Jormungand? Jormungand? I don't know how to say it really, but this was also produced by White Fox, so there's bound to be some kind of staff crossover there. Looking at the poster, it broadly seems to be fantasy, broadly, so like that could have some crossover, but again, I haven't seen it, so would not know. The other one that was kind of funny is School Days, because I believe School Days is a bit of a meme, but um, I've never seen it personally, uh, and he, you know, directed all portions of it, seemingly. I think there's like an OVA that fucks with things or something. Again, I, I, I do not know. I've only heard hearsay. Other than that, there was one more that I thought was kind of interesting. Maybe it was somebody else here. Yeah, it must have been someone else. Yeah, I mean, not much to go off there is my point. Next up, we have series comp and a lot of crossover here. We have a little bit of Lurcher stuff between Assassination Classroom and Danganronpa the Animation. Sure. Uh, there was some crossover with School Days from memory. Yeah, there. Um, Yuki Yuna is a hero, which I've heard about, but haven't watched as well. So what I'm getting at is basically a lot of these I haven't seen. A lot of these are just shows I know the general consensus about rather than actually experiencing them myself, which isn't always the best indicator of what whatever the hell is going on. The other one that's a bit surprising is there's no crossover with other White Fox shows. I think there's a little bit of Steins Gate here along the way somewhere. Not much ReZero, not much Girls Last Tour, which you've seen recently on the channel. I think we have to remember that Katana Gatari came out in... 2010, so there's not going to be a ton of crossover staff-wise there because not a lot of people stay at the same studio for a decade. It just makes sense, right? Next up, we have Taku Iwasaki for the music. Uh, not really much here. There was something on Persona, which I thought was kind of interesting. Persona Trinity Soul, which I think is something linked with Persona 3. So again, Persona I know has good music, so there's like one connection. Other than that, it seemingly is a bunch of shonen 
the other stuff I like recognize them like Soul Eater and Noragami and stuff. Again, Jormungand or whatever the hell. Here again, oh, Gurun Lagan, Jojo's. There's some stuff here. Okay. Again, probably just like industry vet type stuff, you know, like not really much to, to get off of here. I believe Akemaga Kill is White Fox as well, is it? We can find that out. We have the power to do so. Maybe not. I don't see them here. But I've, I've been wrong before. Anyway, I digress. It is not important. I'll save you for, for next because you're a little bit of a weird one. Uh, Tadashi Kudo? Who was this? Art director. Okay, what do we have here? Little Busters. That's a show. Um, all Penguin Drum. Did some art for Penguin Drum. Sure. Only in one episode, seemingly, but that's something, you know, working with Ikuhara. Not really much else that's catching the eye, though. Again, just like around, seemingly. And then animation director is the last one I'll have a look at here, which is Suyoshi Kawada. Again, Jormund Gund, whatever the hell. Uh, a bit of Steins Gate. Uh, Toradora? Sure, just on certain episodes. Okay. An episode of Chihaya Furu. An episode, ooh, seven episodes of my favorite show ever. <laughs> As a manga dyer. Well, it's, it's up there. It's not really, but it's really good. I like As a manga dyer. Um, but anyway, this is getting like tedious and weird. So let's talk about the most overbearing presence on this entire thing, that being Nisio Sin. <laughs> Because because it is, right? The, the the palindromic name, the absolute overbearing nature of whatever he produces. You can see his writing style from a mile away. I've also watched Kubiki Recycle or Zaregoto in this, you know, <laughs> in this man's catalog. A bit of an enigma, does things a little bit differently, is very, very genre savvy, will go against the grain quite often, expect the unexpected, among other things. It could be anything, you know, it's it's down to be interesting when this man has the pen in the hand, right? I mean, I think I went through this at the start of um, my Monogatari stuff as well, and in probably uh, Kubikiri Cycle. But I mean, that's a Pretty Boy Detective Club, I think, right? Madaka Box, I do not know what that is, but I've heard of it. Triple X Holic, XXX Holic, sure. And yeah, it says Kubikiri Cycle here, but Zarekoto series is yeah that's that's quite popular and quite well regarded from what i believe so so yeah that another interesting one is uh where was he take take is the illustrator here the same one that worked with him on kubikiri cycle as well so probably similar ish character designs because that's your base you're working off for your anime character designer to do their work basically expect the characters to look a little bit more like kubikiri cycle and less like araragi and senju Gahara and, and the like right because who was the character designer on all that shit yeah, Vorfan. Yeah, I remember this. Okay, it's all coming back to me. The last thing I wanted to talk about here was briefly Studio White Fox and what they've made before. So, I mean, Steins Gate kind of speaks for itself. ReZero kind of speaks for itself. They're like, you either like them or you know about them. So it's one of the two. Goals Last Tour, which I just finished on the channel last week. It is excellent if I can do one thing with this video besides talk about Katana Gatari. <laughs> It's uh it's recommend Girls Last Tour. It's amazing. And read the manga as well. It's all very good. Here's this Jormund gun show that I was talking about. Again, like this looks fantasy to me, kinda, but they've also got guns, so maybe I was fucking wrong. I don't know. Gochiusa, sure. If you like your cute girls. Which I do for the record. Goblin Slayer. Oh yeah, okay, make a kill. Yeah, sure. Uh and not much else that I recognize really. Sure. I mean, yeah, I kind of went through this studio's lineup when I did the Girls Last Tour series, so it's, nothing's really changed there. Uh, last thing I wanted to do was look at the key visuals, so I'll get that up shortly. Excuse the quality, because I can't find a version of this image that isn't, like, in potato version. Anyway, this is the key visual. This is what I've seen associated with the show, and this is my set of expectations for it. Looking at the character designs, their character designs, I don't know what to tell you. This guy's seemingly got like leaf hair, and he seems pretty ripped, so I don't know. He's already got one over on Araragi, he looks like he's pretty self-confident, as opposed to old mate. Um, 
Girl, girl has long hair, and she's kind of doing two things here. She's got like the she's got the drills going on, which we're a fan of, and she's also got the long flowing thing going on, which we're also a fan of. So <laughs> she's already plus plus points for me. Um, if we're going to contrast some stuff, you seem like you've got a lot of leaf autumn colors, and you seem like you've got a bit of a fire aesthetic going on with the skirt, but it's also purple. So. Sure, maybe that's some contrast there, which we can play off of. Um, in the background, I mean, gen generally just a good-looking background, pretty, you know, well constructed, well placed. Everything is, and the colors are nice, and it's pretty simple. It shows nature and nature in peace, basically, and these two characters just hanging out, and maybe protectors of nature. Maybe that's what you are, considering the whole leaf, you know design there the whole the whole theming but i mean other than that i don't really know what to grab off of it i would say time period is in the past not currently because they're not wearing like blue jeans and t-shirts <laughs> so i mean but it could just be a fantasy world it could be current day but the world's fucking different because reasons i'm sure we'll get into them again this is all just a bit of fun for prediction and and that kind of thing right so yeah i guess that's basically me ready to go and watching episode one i guess some other expectation things i know the episodes are like 50 minutes or so so we're probably not going to be doing like two episodes <laughs> two episodes a, a video or anything because i'm already struggling with time as it is so i don't need you know, two 50-minute anime episodes reacted to and analyzed in the same same little bit there. The other thing would just be general setups for people that haven't been on the channel before. There'll be a picture-in-picture -picture version associated with the with the video. It's down in the description. You can click on it if you need it. The quality will be subpar. But um, again, you should source your own version if you care about that kind of thing and sync it up with the video version that I'll have available in the video. The other thing is that I look through the comments after each video. I'm going to decide if this is the kind of show that needs like a timeline or story notes or something to that effect. But I will have a Google Doc for that kind of thing if it seems like that kind of thing that it's like needed. To my knowledge, this isn't continued. To my knowledge, this will be a closed loop on this story. There isn't a bunch of people whining about Katana Gatari Season 2 as somebody honks their horn outside. Um, so a completed story. That's good too. We like that. So yeah, look, I mean, and also I'm very open in the comments. So just comment anything that I should do differently. I've gotten a subset called Shimata, I believe, which has a certain set of subs on it. Yeah, the subs are GSK-kun. So again, if you wanted to know that, now you do. Uh, I should do my shill stuff. So if you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation. Comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord. Join Discord. Love Discord. Discord, Discord, Discord. And yeah, we're going to jump into episode one of Katana Gatari right now. See, I've got it all jumbled and done all my preamble stuff already. So there's the video. 49 minutes and 50 seconds on that one. We seemingly have opening and ending as well, so so it has that going for it. Again, as I've said, picture in picture. As I've said, GSK kun subs, and I'm open to changing that if need be. And yeah, I mean, no reason to stand on ceremony. We're going to give it a 3, 2, 1 and jump in. Radio, 3, 2, 1, go. Ooh, kind of pause there for a second, so I might need to sync it up. A time of corruption? They use no swords? Sword but no sword? I'll turn this up a little bit too. I had it down for Girls and Panzer, which is very, very loud. Oshu! Hida Castle. Yeah, definitely seems in the past. Somebody could probably tell me period and that kind of thing, if 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 it's relevant. Okay. I like this guy's hair. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. Oh, yeah. Skeletal Knight? I'm guessing he's saving the, the onlooker, which may be our main character. The Rebel.
Hmm. I don't think so. The titular katana. Mm. Says something. What the fuck? Yo. Okay, intriguing. I, I want to have a second look at it. That opening scene. Okay, and that's, yeah. Okay, and then into opening. I feel like I've heard this song. I feel like I say that for every series, though. The perks of playing Osu. <laughs> I also used to do a ton of those, you know, like, guess the anime OP. I used to do a ton of those quizzes. Just by myself, because I'm a massive loser. But, um... I used to be quite good, even for the shows I hadn't seen before. I guess I should talk about the opening as well. Okay, association between the two characters, potentially romantic. We, we're going to see. Okay, side character. Nisio a sin moment. It's a way different vibe. It's very normal. I guess that's what you get when you have Shaft doing their own weird shit on top of Nisua Sin already doing weird shit. Alright. The main character seems like kind of a Chad, I'm gonna be honest. And of course we'll do the read lyrics and all that jazz in the post. Zito kan kana? Sure. Okay. Interesting. Is an old mate shirtless? I think it's in his nature. You're literally coughing. <laughs> I recognize her voice too. Hmm. <laughs> A new ultimate move. But we do have, we have a conflict coming on a boat <laughs> to come see us. Okay. Seems like a lot of care there, but um, a little bit tired. Ready for rest. Father, you say? Yeah. 
It didn't seem like a rebellion, what I was looking at in the first scene. Weird. Henlo, Henlo girl. I'll kill you. <laughs> not the triple, not the triple shot. Sure, we'll say that. Well, it's, she's not normally here, so yeah. <laughs> Very Nisio a sin. Aware of convention. <laughs> Gotcha. Which firmly places that as a flashback at the start of the episode. <laughs> judging him like a piece of meat. Shichika? Togame. <laughs> it's got negative riz. Oh, you're very important. And a bit of action. Whatever you say. Yeah, you're going to get to try your special move now. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, you're a strategist. It doesn't mean you need to be um competent. <laughs> okay, that's like placing it time period wise, probably right. <laughs> you're supposed to bring water. Mm -hmm. Probably wants his expertise, right? Yeah, as we saw at the start, right? Indeed. Unsuccessfully. Indeed. What, impressively bad? 
<laughs> Indeed. I say, I wonder if he has the ability. Okay, we don't need to see it in action. <laughs> no, he, no, I think you're, no, you didn't really listen to him. They, they held on that pretty long. That was funny. Ooh, a true outside, eh? Seemingly so from our brief interactions. Yeah. Again, we're, we're pure outsiders, seemingly. Hmm. It is. Oh. A thousand... It depends on what we're talking about. Depends how wide spanning it is. Oh, okay. That's that's a that's a majority. Okay. But these swords are important. No. <laughs> yeah, got not not the sharpest tool, eh? But I see. Oh, and then we're getting mercenaries out to do some stuff like that. Oh, and they're super powerful too. Yeah. 
Gun. The sword gun. And because you've got this ability within your bloodline, you'd be a good person to do so. Indeed. Whoa. It's a glass half full, half empty. What was that shot there before, though? It's up to interpretation. It's in a very official title. Just now, yeah. Yeah, I guess st strategian isn't really a word now that I think about it. Strategist is. Are you poor? Oh. Gotcha. I think you're dumb enough that this is going to work. This seemingly is a continuous problem. So whenever you find a sword, you like rebel. Of course I am. Yeah, what, what do I get? What's in it for me? Well, based on your track record, maybe. You're seemingly a little bit incompetent. So... Oh. Oh, and that's why you were talking about he, he was good looking before. But yeah, sure, okay. I'll buy it. 
we've got to get a bit more of a dynamic going here. Oh, ninjas, right? And that was the shot I saw before. Off he goes. Well, it's good instinct. It seemed like there was more than one. But I did only see one in that shot before. Kyotoru. Who was on the boat with you? There was a boatman. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well that's another that's another twist in the tail then. Okay. <laughs> it's two, that's too ready. Why does voice just change so hard? I was with her the whole time. Oh, was still some element of deception there, but sure. <laughs> He's a very funny protagonist so far. Like, directly contrasting with Araragi, right? Araragi thinks a lot. Sky doesn't think a lot. At least on on the surface level. Okay. Sure, that's one way to carry it. Skull sword. Well, not all humans, probably some, some ninjas can. Oh, and that's the name of the episode. Zeto Kana. Okay, Hades. <laughs> Alright, there must be some language shit there.
I must place in the sword above yourself. This guy, he's got that poison gym leader type design. I think I said the same thing for Kubikiri Cycle, that they all look like Pokemon gym leaders, and then I found out there was some, um, some crossover there. All these flower names too, right? Hmm. And then you you couldn't break it. That's why you're surprised. Gotcha. It's a strong sword. So you in it for the money? Oh, Renkinjutsu. <laughs> 12 times more suspicious than number 12 again, too. Mm. You attacked my honor. All right, now he's getting serious. Yeah, flower aesthetic. Sure. <laughs> she fell on her ass. Not really. <laughs> I was just doing what came naturally. What is he, a Pokemon? O okay, I'm going to end this right now. Well, you, you, you did mention some kind of cool move before. Nisio is in. Fourth wall. Smash the fourth wall. He put it away again. Okay. Ninja. <laughs> I don't care.
He bulked up. Okay, he does feel pain. That's good. Where'd, um... Where'd Togami go? Oh, yep. Gotcha. The, the, the strategian. Alright. She's already doing a bit of a damsel in distress thing. Which may be some kind of ploy as well for the whole romantic angle. I'll be killing you soon. Hmm. It's a good strategy. Come on. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh my god I'll torture you when I return no <laughs> I don't think I'll join with you poison gym leader that's getting weirdly touchy feely Oh. Ah. Uh. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you could do such a thing. Is she naked? You bet she is. He is pretty dumb, but you aren't wearing clothes, so, you know. Oh, now you're wearing clothes. He might fall for it. Oh, that's a cool setup, too. I might return as him to kill you. Okay, weirdo. Oh, okay. Well, that's obviously going to get debunked. All right, let's go. Let's figure this out. We call this guy Einstein. This late. Oh. Okay. Why are you so horny? Hmm. You need to work on your acting lessons, I feel. Pony kick. Ha ha ha! 
<laughs> oh my god. How do you know? He's kind of stupiding his way out of these situations. She wants them all for herself. Oh, so you were listening. Oh, so not even that. She just wants... Okay. She wants clout. She wants to even higher. Oh my god. Indeed. Potentially. Potentially that'll be the conflict. I don't know. Ooh. Throw a name on my family. <laughs> Perspective is relevant, sure. Ooh. Okay. Interesting, because I recognize that name, but I'll need to go back and check some stuff. I see. And then her hair goes white. Okay. Oh. Okay, sure. If you end of that, you end of that. <laughs> Ooh, a bit of a mirror match. Even itch. Such intriguing information. Mm. 
indeed. Oh. Oh, so you copied no skill? <laughs> oh. Okay, five. Six and seven. Yeah, I mean, that seemed pretty good. Sure. How did the. Oh, were you trying to, like, escape and ended up in that position? Oh, it's very straightforward. Probably because he is. Oh, I'm again very straightforward. Okay. Your your technique worked. Again, we saw a little bit into her own internal thoughts there, so I think it's pretty clear to say that she's not just using him. Like, there is some familial link, probably based on that flashback, right? Also, goodbye, character, Nanami, or whatever your name was. Togame. Oh, you approve. Well, that's good. Well, there is going to be trials and tribulations, I'm sure. Bakemono, you say? I'm obsessed to see who's who's her VA. Because I wonder if it's the same person or like a similar character that just speaks in that intonation. Oh, four directives. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I thought that one came with the whole love me thing. This is not being being like a sundere or anything. Ah, <laughs> cute. I really like the colors here during the sunset. 
I'll buy you some drip. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for the katana gottery. Who is she talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very interesting. I think the show it reminded me the most of, weirdly enough, was Tatami Galaxy. In that it seemingly has a really strong structure for episodes. So I'm guessing each episode will be about one of the swords. 12 and 12 right that would make sense to me and um it's very dialogue driven very very much so like even more so than something like monogatari which at least sometimes gave you moments to breathe this was very <laughs> so along with that i'm probably getting some story stuff wrong initially but that's what the re read is for to figure that kind of stuff out from what i've been seeing maybe i'll I'll at least do some Google Doc stuff now. Maybe look through it and then write something. Just as kind of an indicator of some story directions and some general premise, so I don't need to always be reminded of such a thing. But I guess just on a base level, if I was watching this in my own time, would I give it another episode? I mean, 50 minutes is a pretty big time sink. But other than that, I'm pretty sold. Most of the time... Or well, most of all, I should say, I'm sold on the characters already. I like our two our two leads like a lot. And very different from Monogatari for sure. And this is a preview, probably. Should I watch these kind of things? I don't know. I'll probably just watch this, but then won't like read anything after the fact. I'll try to analyze it too hard. He does get his drip, sure. Oh. Cheerio, she reckons. Okay. Cool, that was a bit of a, a bit of a marathon, but uh, yeah, we'll jump into a little bit of analysis on Katana Gatari episode one. So yeah, that was episode one. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thought it was quite an interesting tale we're setting up, but also one with a pretty finite ending, seemingly. Um, a very interesting main character in contrast to a lot of other Nisio Sin characters I've seen up to this point, especially in that main character slot. Um, an intriguing backstory that I'm trying to make heads of tales of at the moment. Um, and what it all means and, and, and so forth and what was happening in this uh, in this flashback that we're beginning with. Our two main characters, I believe Shichika and, uh, and Togame, but I'll, I'll check just so I'm not being a, being a nonce. Most certainly Shichika and Togame and I believe the sister was Nanami? Indeed, Nanami. Okay, cool. So that was the three characters that we had today. Also, there was the fucking poison gym leader. He had like a core, core name or something, Corsari or something. Anyway, well, I'm sure it'll become relevant at some point, but he seems like character of the week. Where, again, we have this big wide shot, which shows like 12 or so characters, and they all have designs. And then in the preview, we saw one of those designs again. So, one sword, one character, one episode. Right, that would make sense to me. But yeah, those are the characters we met for the moment. We got a general feel for how the story will be presented, which is mainly through dialogue, mainly through moment-to-moment -moment dialogue, not through a lot of, like, recaps or, or talking to the camera segments or anything like that. Like, kind of, Monogatari has a lot of exposition in this way, where it'll be a character kind of saying what happens rather than displaying the scene where it happened, right? Where this show seems very in the moment for the moment. Anyway, um, again, I want to talk mostly, the, the most intriguing thing to me is the main character and how different he feels, right? Because, okay, let's let's break it down. So I just looked it up. The main character of Kubikuri Cycle is called, like, it's like a first person story. It's like Boku or whatever. So, like, that's hard to describe in the third person. I believe I said the main character when I reacted to that series back in the day. But contrast 
uh, Shichika here with the main character of Kubikuru Cycle with Araragi, right? Three boys or men uh, at a very similar age in their life, right? For, you, within like five or ten years of each other. They're not like huge differences there. <laughs> the main character of Kubikuru Cycle is, uh, <laughs> is an overthinker that has poor self-esteem and there's also some weird meta stuff going on as well where again he may think more than he does or he may not think more than he does or like what is his relation and his fascination with characters such as um uh kunigisa yeah kunigisa um and the rest of the you know the the, the geniuses there like his inferiority complex there as it pertains to that and blah 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 blah, blah that permeates throughout the rest of that portion of the story i've seen so far Araki, right? An overthinker, somebody that's almost neurotic at points, that has a certain perspective on things, and <laughs> at certain points in Monogatari may have an inferiority complex that may spin off into other machinations throughout the rest of the show, may lead to certain story decisions that he has in certain points in the show, may lead to such a lack of self-worth and self-respect that he is willing to sacrifice himself at certain points and a chronic overthinker chronically so right to the point where he seems that he's most happiest when he stops thinking that much towards the end of the show and gets a little bit more self-confidence but again that's paraphrasing i've got a whole series talking about that again in contrast shichika he he, he focuses on powering up his special moves and not listening to conversations and letting other people do the thinking for him, one of the major things that got him out of the bind towards the climax of this episode was his stupidity, right? He didn't realize that it was Togame at all. That's why he kicked the guy, and that's why he ended up winning, basically. That was one of the main ways he saw through the disguise, is just pure dumb luck. Emphasis on the dumb. Um, and I find that really refreshing. Really, really refreshing. Um, and also this, again, she's called the, the, the strategian, I think we're going with. The strategist would be more correct, but again, that's the joke. Um, she doesn't seem like she's <laughs> overburdened with intelligence either. So it's an interesting dynamic. They seem a little bit, it seems a little bit more pulpy, no? It seems a little bit, bit more fun. Again, like, Nisuasin thrives on this kind of thing. He's got me in thinking that this is conventional and maybe swinging some things at a certain point like just keep keep your eyes open keep you looking to your periphery and uh, we may figure some things out um but yeah i'm keen to watch through this flashback again we may go pretty quick through the dialogue considering it's just dialogue there's not really that much in the production department to highlight besides line work i think is pretty mad um I liked his body contorting when he was changing as well, the, the villain character this episode, uh, as well as some of the colors towards the end. Other than that, seems pretty, it's, it's nice. It's not cheap, but um, it's also not shaft. You know, I don't need to like, oh yeah, this is constructed really well. I need to pause and talk about this frame. It's not going to be like that, I don't think. It's going to be way more about the story. And yeah, I better get a wriggle on because I got 50 minutes of this to do. So, um, so let's strap in. So in the time of warring states... A time of corruption, there existed an ultimate way of the sword that used no swords. Yeah, the the, the technique of the Kyoto Kyotoru, I believe it is, that clan. Cool, and now I think I've got a better idea of the setup, right? So Togame, if we can believe old mate, that guy, right? And I I guess it is confirmed by Togami's internal dialogue. So yeah, we're taking it as truth. Her father was leader of the rebellion, right? And whatever happened to make now the main character, Shichika's, his clan, be forced into isolation is unknown to this point. Because when I originally read this opening scene, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Father, character, sweet, I understand, cool. Um, he must be rebelling right now, and then they caught him and then imprisoned his children on this island, right? But no, that, that that's... That's a matter of circumstance, I think, of different circumstance to the circumstance we're seeing right now. This is him crushing, or probably working for the Shogunate, and crushing this rebellion. 
I think that's what we're seeing. But again, I'm willing and able to be corrected and people say that I'm wrong because I might be wrong. It's probably even likely. So we constantly get zoom ins on an eye here. And I was mistakenly thinking that this was the main character's eye, right? Mostly because I saw some black hair in the periphery, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, fair enough. But then, of course, there's the bit where the hair turns white and that becomes a little bit more... You know, what is it with Nisio Sin and characters changing their hair color too, just while I'm talking about it, but I digress. As we can see there, through the wave of the hand, all of the soldiers fell. Very strong character seemingly, right? This being the, he had a name, y Yasu something? Oh, I'll see it here in a second, I'm sure. So from that perspective, these must be, I thought this was like a skull for the record too, that he was like fighting like a skeleton warrior, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But you would infer that these uh, samurai here, maybe, I don't know, swordsmen, uh, would be working with the rebels, right? They'll be rebel soldiers. I don't know if there's any like historical context I should be looking into this, like a la like Heke Monogatari or something to that effect, but... Again, it seems pretty fantastical. Uh, even if it is referential, it must be based on a referential myth. Yeah, this is the rebel. Hello, the rebel, right? Mistakenly, again, I thought this was the main character even as well. This is Hida Takahito, right? And then Togame, Togame Takahito, maybe? Or Hida Togame, or however the names are gonna work there. And yeah, Soka, this is how I meet my end, right? So, oh, I'm just under the, as soon as I see this bloke, I'm under the impression that um that I'm going to die. He brings out his sword, tries to face him. Yeah, no, not like that. It's not going to work. At this point, it is unavoidable. He says something to him himself, right? And then dies. Okay. Again, there's a nice um uh, like layer put on top of the scene as well, so we know it's a flashback too, in case it wasn't bleeding the obvious to everybody else. Yeah, and then and then this is when the eye shows up, right? So her father dies and then the eye shows up. There's something in that, maybe? I don't know. The, the eye also shows up towards the end of the episode, too. I need to look into what eye means. It's also funny in retrospect that now we, we flash out of that flashback. It makes a whole lot of sense now that the flashback happens, right? She's the point of view character of the flashback, right? Like, of course, she would be remembering it when she was, like, kind of sleeping on the boat on the way in. It's also funny to know that this is, like, poison gym leader guy um, rowing the boat. Of course, it would be very hard to tell because he has, like, disguising powers. So it doesn't look like him now because he's disguised. That's the island where the hero of the rebellion was exiled to. Okay, so hero of the rebellion, right, isn't he was on the rebellion side. It was he, he quelled the rebellion and then he was exiled. Okay, two separate incidents, I think, too. Okay. Oh, and then we're into the, the opening. Just from a sound perspective, I thought the opening just sound like an anime song. I don't have much to say about it, but I'll, of course I'll read through the, the lyrics here. And again, we're just kind of panning across characters. The art style itself is quite nice, obviously referential to that period of Japanese history. Um... Again, we'll go through individual shots here, but again, we're mostly reading these lyrics. As though I were the fluttering flowers scattering, kind of pan from a shot of him holding her and then like obviously running to go get swords or whatever. He's like adventure starting uh, action shot. The ending of a crimson jewel taken by a fire in the evening storm. Crimson jewel? Fire before evening storm? Storm as a metaphor? Sure. Still fearing, life takes flight. And we've, of course, we've got a lot of flowers going on here and, and leaves and stuff, um, which is invoking uh, the main character, Shichika. Still fearing life takes flight, finally, finally to the ends of the heavens. Okay, less specific. Become dyed in red, missing one another, the, pre the princess's dream granted. Okay, we, we need to go more into this dream, right? Why does she actually want to collect the swords? Something about father's dream, something about continuing on a family legacy, I thought I, sh I saw there as well. Obviously, like more of these characters here will become recognizable as we see them as well. Again, I, I, I know you, you were like the one person we did say. Wandering in the long awaited night, shall we burn together? Of course, she's got the fire aesthetic going on too, of course. Yes, with, with the skirt. I did note that. Gotcha. And then Shall We Burn Together may... It, it, it's got a bit more of a romantic tinge than I thought just looking at the looking at the cover. I mean, there seemingly is a <laughs> pretty classical, but, but all, you know, altogether nice relationship blooming here. Again, they both seem kind of perfect in that they're, they think they're smart, 
or at least one party thinks they're smart, but they're, they're, they're both like kind of dumb. That's why I see them working out, right? It's good when two dumb people get together. Because our fluttering thoughts dance, I will forbid my doubts. I was born from endless halls. Our bonds are drawn further into the sky. Another thing that's like a really weird thing to talk about, I like their size dynamic, right? I like that she's like a, like tiny. <laughs> and he's like a huge Chad. I think that's cool too. I don't know. It feels uh, notably fantasy to me, which I like. Our bonds drawn into the sky before the flowers fall. Sure. Again, flowers metaphorically talking to Shichka. Now this is Zeto Kana, right? You would have to imagine that Kana means sword, right? Considering if we go to like the, the preview for the next one, I think it's like something else Kana is the name of the next episode. So again, you would have to imagine it's relevant. And I don't know what Zeto means. I could look that up. I've got lonely isolated island. That would make sense. Sure. Tip of the tongue speech way of talking makes less sense. Extreme excitement, side splitting laughter. I would imagine the first one, right? With, um, again, put the kanji on screen if need be. Yeah, I'd imagine that's what we're looking at here. So, Lonely Island sword story thing. <laughs> sure. The one who came to power after the rebellion, Shogun Yanari, fearing the power of the hero of the rebellion, Yats Yasuri Mutsui, which is um his dad's name, which is Mut Mutsui? Yeah, sure. Mutsui. Exiled along with his family to this uninhabited island. Okay, everything is clear. Cool. <laughs> Two separate incidents. Uh, kind of Kyotoru, right? That the the leader of that clan exiled with his family to this island, right? Because they're too strong. You beat the rebellion almost single-handedly, right? You're too strong. We need you to go over here. And then, of course, on a bound, blah, 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 goes and does it, right? And it also makes sense for, for Togami as well, right? Because she has first-hand knowledge of this power and what it did to her family and all that kind of stuff, right? as she was a pre uh, princess at the time, right? She would go here as a last resort. <laughs> if there's one person that operates without pretense, it's this guy. And I think she knows that as well. It's part of the it's part of the pitch. But 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 also part of it is is she's coming at him with so much openness as well. Just like fall for me. That's what I want out of you. That way I know I can trust you. Yeah. Intriguing. Okay. I, I, I'm happy I've put together the backstory a little bit more now. I think this here is a good shot to talk about the, the art design as well, the backgrounds. Very storybook. I like this. I like this a lot. It's quaint. Again, again we'll, we'll see how this moves on as we progress to further stuff that looks a little bit more like this wide that we saw very early. Like that kind of stuff, right? Like a bit more of your traditional temple design. But this kind of stuff here, very quaint. I like. So here we have Shichika and Nanami, both here on the island, basically. Um, they trade turns doing housework, apparently. Shichika has to go get water from the cistern to, to fill the cistern, I should say. So they have stuff to live on. They basically live in isolation. They have done for ages. I'm picking up some tones of you getting sick pretty easily, right? Because don't come outside. It's It's cold out here. Brother's very protective of his older sister. She's very soft-spoken. I wanted to look up her VA. I'll do that now. Um, and yeah, like, th this dynamic's pretty easy to see. Two siblings care for each other, want to do the best for each other. The brother's obviously, like, very strong and capable and is going to use that kind of stuff to help his... his... Again, operating without pretense is, is everybody here. Very honorable character so far. So the voice actor for Nanami is Mai Nakahara. Very, very obviously, now that I hear it, Nagisa from Clanat. Very, very obvious voice actor choice there, I think. Uh, let's do a little bit more of a scroll just to check that I'm picking up everybody. Sure, I haven't seen Fairy Tail. This friggin' guy from um, Nozaki-kun, sure. Katana Gachari, of course. Um... I don't even know who this is from, um, Origairo. All right, I basically don't know anybody else here. Danganronpa? Oh, yeah, you're one of the fucking anime original characters. Get off my screen. All right, cool. Um, sure. Nagisa from, from Clanad. That's the voice actress that I thought it was, so I'm happy that I got that. I don't remember teaching you to be overly considerate is interesting as well. Like, she's been teaching him from a very long, young age. Again, maybe you've got a little bit more going on than, than can be perceived right now. 
Also, there's no reason for you to train anymore. Why was there once a reason, right? Because he's been living in isolation for 20 years since he was born, basically, right? Like, when was there a reason for you to train and why did that stop? Yeah, what's the point in maintaining a combat style that will end with your generation? Ooh, potentially need a... Because, <laughs> of course, if you're living in isolation, right? So we're going to trap them on this island, brother and sister. Hopefully, again, Nisio has a track record, but hopefully shouldn't, you know have sex, and have children, right? Hopefully. So having the third party there is also important for this family bloodline mini story going on. Sure. It's already been a year since father died as well. Okay, cool. I don't know who mom is, but father died a year ago. So he, before that point, he was living with you two on the island. And that's when you were getting trained, probably. Okay, I'm piecing it all together. And he thought of a really awesome ultimate move, which may be the ultimate move that he uses in the end of the episode, too. Oh, even here. Okay, so basically I was an idiot at the start of the episode. So Nanami here is already trying to push uh, Shichika to make a boat and escape, right? Like, you, 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 you could be able to do that. You should do that. You should go see the world. I'm okay here. You've got the power to do so. And potentially I'm too frail to attempt such a thing. Yeah, here we go. Here they are training on the beach. Gotcha. Okay. This is the only thing I inherited from my father. So I want to cherish it while I still can, and in that way, show her my moves. Then we spy a rogue Togami uh, drinking from a stream nearby, leaving a lot of footprints, maybe even on purpose to get his, you know, to get him to follow her. And set up this scene where she, <laughs> where she's at the at the pond and turns around like this. Maybe I'm thinking too hard about it, but but maybe this is her idea of like a romantic, like setting up a romantic first meeting, and <laughs> wanted to lure him for that. Um, also, there was a bit of context there that apparently, like in the past, there'd been people that had found the island or whatever. Father would just kill them in one blow, so he didn't take kindly to people like coming on the island and trying to help them or hinder them in any way. And one thing I really respect here in the dialogue is the bluntness. I love how matter of fact um, Shichika is immediately, oh, a person. I didn't see them very often. And a katana. I didn't see them like ever. Also, what are you doing here? You, you're not allowed to bring a sword here. Like, like there's no emotion to it. It's very, it's very just by the book. Also like this line here, this is the first Nisioasin ism that I've seen in this whole thing. Um, <laughs> like, why are you asking these questions? I don't know. I'm supposed to ask him in this kind of situation. He's just kind of going down his list, right, of, like, what this encounter should be like in a traditional story. But it's like, this is my role in the story, so this is why I'm saying these lines. That's at least what I'm seeing from this. And again, talking to his bluntness. So again, she's initially looking for dad, right? So, and she was going to look for dad and then say, hey, fall for me, dad. So what happened to mom as well is another question, but also how old are you? <laughs> but also she's firsthand aware of how strong he is, thus wants to use him for reasons, whatever those reasons may be. And again, she's like sizing him up here. Like <laughs> he's got a pretty good body. He doesn't look terrible either. This could still work. I could still play out my plan as I have it right now with this bloke instead. And yes, this is Togame. We get official introductions here. She is in the position of the general director of the army of the Shogunate. I serve as a strategist, or as we say later in the episode, str strategian. And first of all, I'll be putting you to the test to check if you're the real thing. And then she falls on her ass, right? But she also gets her eye out there, whatever that eye is, right? The purple one. But yeah, this is the first meeting of their destiny together. <gasps> How exciting. I don't know what this Gyafun thing is about, though, but but I digress. Yeah, this is... Again, Nisio Sin has written... Or he has written as well, but he's read a lot of fiction. <laughs> he knows how these kind of things go in tropey, kind of normal-ass stories. Stories that aren't as story-aware as, as his stories are, right? So this tracks so far as a pretty traditional story. So, when's it going to change? When's shit going to be weird? Or is it going to play it straight? That'd be the ultimate weird fucking twist of all time, right? But again, it's it's pretty obvious, right? Like, this is where, you know, the, these two characters, their destinies intertwined, and then saying a weird anachronistic thing, right? You know, instead of saying the time period, using this for the time period is like a weird 
again, it's, it's meant to stand out as a bit strange. So a nice subtle joke there is like he comes back from the, the watering hole or whatever and um, just carrying her in the bucket. Nanami looks broadly concerned. <laughs> of course, we know of the, the Kyoto Furu. Kyoto Furu? Is that what we're calling this shit? Kyoto Ru. Kyoto Ru. Kyoto Ru. I'm trying to commit some of these to memory. Also, excuse VLC doing its thing. But yeah, as we've seen, it's the it's the sword style by like just using your hands, right? So hands as strong as swords. That's why he does like the karate kicks and stuff and all that kind of hand to hand combat. Again, dialogue here is pretty snappy. We get a number of pans to characters just judging certain characters in certain moments as well. Especially like Nanami here. Nanami's very cautious early of her, right? So it's like but she does it in her tone of voice, it's very soft. So it's like so you 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 violently attacked my brother? I was just testing him, right? Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's this going for you so far? Consider yourself lucky to have tripped over that rock. If your blade had reached Shichika's body, you wouldn't have escaped with just a bump on your forehead. Much like we see later in the episode where she approaches him and, well, she doesn't approach him. <laughs> a copy of her approaches him and gets their ass beat, basically. So the pitch here, hey, wouldn't you like to rule the world? Immediate answer. No, I wouldn't. We play this joke out twice. Basically, she continues to like sell the pitch whilst not realizing that he immediately said no. So is that potentially the motivation of the rebels? If you look into it, you'll find that even the current shogunate were originally servants who supplanted their masters. So rebellions ain't that bad. Wanting to rule at all, not that bad. Maybe this is part of the motivation somewhere along the line. Maybe this would be part of the drama. Are you merely using me? Is it true love? What do we really want out of this whole thing? All that whole conflict, right, playing out. And then, of course, the realization that he said no initially. Good bit. I like it. They they hold on a very long time, too. Again, he's a pure isolationist, like, fish out of water if he goes to any other community, right? I'm sure there's going to be some of the content next episode, him actually interacting with people that have been on the mainland for forever, right? Like, do you do you want to rule the world? I'm like, no, not really. I don't even really know that much about it. <laughs> Why would I want to rule the world? Also, he's kind of dumb, so <laughs> don't use, like, wordy language on him. Also, like, <laughs> Nanami needs to stay in the room as well, because if you try to bamboozle him, she's like the brains of the operation. So she'll see see through some stuff. That's kind of her role as well. Here's the next question. Do you know a swordsmith by the name of Shikizaki Kiki? Which is the sword maker of the swords that are relevant for this whole shebang, basically. And then, no. No, I don't know such a swordsman. Even on such a remote island, of course you would know the swordsman. No, I, I just don't know. In fact, I wouldn't know him even if I wasn't an isolationist because I don't care about swords. Do you even listen? <laughs> Shikizaki Kiki, famous swordsman of the Sengoku period. I only heard that he had a close connection to the founder of Kyoto Ru. Something to watch? Something to watch, maybe? Again, we've said that this is the seventh generation, so first generation potentially had some kind of connection. I do not know. Maybe that'll come up in one of our conflicts. You would almost certainly say it would, right? That would just, yeah, that would lead to some conflict. And we lack conflict, of course. So this uh, Shikizaki guy, belonging to no country or house, he just made swords and gave them to whoever, basically, throughout the entire land. Within 25 countries, he gave out a thousand swords. And then we do a similar joke here where it's like, oh, that seems like a lot. Let's not relatively, if we're talking about 25 countries across an entire lifespan, right? But also, like, it is a lot if you consider the 12 that are actually relevant. So, I don't know. The more of his swords that a country had, the better they did on the battlefield, such as the quality of the swords. Thus, of course, he influenced the period in that kind of way, right? They say over 150 years ago, Shogun Q obsessed over, obsessed, excuse me, over those mythical weapons. And when he achieved unification of the country, he held a majority of the swords, 507 of them. Okay, listen. So, I would need more Japanese history knowledge, but I would imagine, like, unification of the country, when she said, like, 25 countries had swords, that'd be, like, different areas within Japan, right? And then we unified such an area, and thus then we have 507. That makes sense to me. So so this Shogun Q guy collecting all the swords, he collected 100,000 swords in total, which is in fact a lot as we learn. Um, so he did, so did he collect all these Shikazaki swords? Not quite. Maybe this has moved on to the office of the new Shogun. Maybe that's what you're talking about. 
Again, are you lying there? Are you telling the truth? Or will be revealed at some point? I don't know. So yeah, he got to 988. But again, this was 150 years ago. Um, but those 988 were mere practice for the purpose of creating these 12, which are notably more powerful. Maybe less so. Maybe Kana doesn't mean like um, like Katana the way I thought it might have. No, Kana might be something else. Because then we go next, Naka Namakura. Not Nakamura, Namakura. Gotcha. I'm getting there. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, and then I'm guessing, yeah, a lot of these will be the swords used in various episodes, right? Of course, the one I'm most interested in is Gun. I want to learn about Gun Sword. So these are evil ass swords. The records say that the army sent by Shogun Q to collect them were wiped out by the power of this single sword, generally held by some kind of third party, right? Not by some other kingdom or anything, by some rogue just off in the wilderness, right? But again, destroyed armies and armies of people that tried to steal this sword from them. So clearly pretty powerful. So I come to you, Shichika, leader of the Kyotoru clan or whatever the hell. I come to you with the, you know, asking you to help me find these 12 swords. Thus, that's what she meant when, did you want to rule the world? Because those that have all the swords would rule the world and so forth. So the Shogun has been pretty powerful for a while now. Um, thus, they're able to repress any rebellions, indeed, with brute force. And yeah, that's, yeah, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, the rebellion was a problem. Of course, you don't actually believe that. The Awari Shogunate has been in power for 150 years now, probably related to Q. No one in this generation really understands what the Sengoku period was like anymore. These days, no one thinks of Shikizaki Kiki's swords as any more than trinkets. But just think about it. If the conspirators behind the last rebellion had gotten a hold of those 12 swords, what would have happened to the current shogunate? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to continue reading through the dialogue. Maybe I missed something. But you're not who you say you are when you say that you're associated with the current shogunate, right? You're potentially a third party that wants to restart a rebellion? Question mark? I do not know. So, of course, the... You're framing this like the Shogunate wants those swords just in case, but maybe you're collecting them for your own nefarious per personal means and using him in the process, but will it turn into something genuine? We do not know. We also see the shot here, the one that scared me in the moment, just, oh yeah, this guy's watching along. There's some kind of ninja outside. I do like the, uh, <laughs> the conceit that he has all these shuriken or whatever in his mouth, right? All those little knives, kunai, they have those like kunai in his mouth. He laughs at her proposition for, you know, Shichika to fall for her, and then they fly everywhere. And that's why he's discovered. I like that a lot. I think it's pretty funny. It would also track with you not being a good strategist, really, right? And calling yourself a strategian. Are you like, are you like being like a fake person? I do not know. Yeah, is that a new post that was created in the last 20 years of something? Because I have no knowledge of it. Yeah, okay, you, you might be lying, I think. And then we go through it a little bit, right? So at first we trusted some ninjas to go get the weapons for us because ninjas are pretty cool. But instead those ninjas betrayed us and went and used the weapons themselves. Thus we see one of the ninjas here before, but that ninja there wants to know information to find more swords. So that's why he's kind of tailing Togami. Again, I don't know if I'm, I'm in a position right now where I'm supposed to be distrustful of you or not, right? Are you lying about you being connected to the current shogunate? Or are you working on your own? Or I don't know. But I trust you as a character. And that's enough at this moment. Again, I'm sure people will correct me on what I'm supposed to know at this point and not supposed to know. You know? So this is set up for the end as well. So we've gone through the ninjas, right? The ninjas work for money. And that's why they're not honorable. Or no, that's why then they can be corruptible, right? Because they may find the sword that's more valuable than any money and then want to go use that instead, right? Same with the swordsman, right? His name was Sabi Hakuhei. They tasked him with retrieving what they thought was the hardest sword to obtain, Hakuto Hari. However, he obtained it in a shockingly short time. This this screams final boss, right? But then he obtained it and pissed off, basically. The poison was too strong and he betrayed us despite precisely because of that honor. He was unable to resist the honor of owning one of Shikizaki's swords. So yeah, all the swords that are strong are now in possession of strong guys. But we can't trust people with honor. We can't trust people with money. What can we trust them with? Another great moment here is like... <laughs> She tries to goad him a little bit, right? She says, are you scared? Of course I'm scared. Also, I don't care about swords. Why are you here? It's a hassle. I don't want to leave the island. I don't want to cross the sea. And it's like, do you think I didn't anticipate that answer? I need some motivation to get you to move. Of course, that motivation 
is myself. Yeah, Aida, are you going to work for love? You're going to work for me because you're going to fall for me. That's how this is going to work. And again, two blunt kind of dumbasses talking to each other right now, right? Like, <laughs> like you're going to fall for me. What? I, I don't even know you. Also, like, why should I leave? I'm scared. <laughs> it's just good. It's kind of entertaining. I like it. And then, so, knives thrown. Nanami's the one to notice. And then pushes both of them out of the way as well, which I like. I don't know why she noticed it, but, but she did. She clearly got some talent there. And then, yeah, he goes straight after him. Like, oh, how dare you? Blah, 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 blah. So here we have the Maniwa Core ninjas that are after them. The ones who turn traitor the instant they learned the value of the swords. So they're connected to the backstory that you've just told, right? So, so again, as I've talked about, you could be operating on your own and go, hey, ninjas, I know where the sword is. Can you go get it for me? I'll pay you money. And then they go, okay, and then they steal the swords. And then you do the same thing with the swordsman. Or it could be you representing the shogunate, as we've explained, because the shogunate wants those those swords as a just-in-case kind of thing, right? But you would have a motivation in wanting to incite a rebellion, considering what happened to you earlier in the story. Uh, anyway, I, I don't know for sure. I'm not going to dwell on it too much. There's some nice subtle lines here as well. There's no way he would lose to a ninja. True, even if he has one of the swords. Still also true. Um, Shichika is very strong. Also, Togami, you certain there's no way you were followed. And then, of course, my mind immediately went to the to the rower, right? He was the only other character we saw. He's the one that was the, was the ninja the whole time. Yeah, don't insult me, even though I didn't consider the, the, the person that rowed my fucking boat this whole time anyway. Of course, I'm important. That's why I get somebody to row the boat for me. Maybe that's evidence to say that she actually is working for the Shogunate. Again, the, the style here, very like just back and forth. You know what I mean? Through this whole section, it's just kind of like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know? Again, dialogue driven, most first and foremost, right? We're not being airy fairy, fancy like, like, uh, like Monogatari, I think. Oh, that's why his voice was deep, right? He still had the voice on of the, of the rower, right? And then he changes to his real voice, the great Maniwa Komori, right? Of course, money were core, money were Komori. There's, there's something going on there. Like, and again, he's just like being this really, this really pulpy evil guy. Like, I rode the whole time. She's got quite the nerve. Like, blah, 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 blah. Just like absolute yampatron. And then he's like, does everyone from the mainland talk this much? Jesus. Again, just pure fish out of water. Pure just Chad. Doesn't care. Cool guy. We like cool guy protagonist fucking Chichika. He's very, <laughs> he's quite entertaining. Come to think of it, this is my first real battle. I guess it is. Again, you've been living as an isolationist and your father would deal with any near dwells in the past. So yeah, this is your first real fight. It's like, this is weird. You don't even have a sword. Well, I do have a sword. I just keep it in my fucking mouth. <laughs> Again, this guy's fun. I'm going to keep calling him Poison Gym Leader though, because that's what he is. Again, this whole time, right? <laughs> it'll be it'll be dialogue 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 yap 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 i'm important evil guy diffused by whatever shichika has to say it's like that's a really valuable sword are you sure you should be carrying it around like that it's all sticky and stuff now like again i've seen this dynamic before and i pr practically love it every time it's giving me it's giving me fucking stupid um What's his name? Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Yeah, it's giving me Saitama from uh, from One Punch Man, of course, along with any number of other really <laughs> non-committal, uninterested protagonists. I just Psyche K. Th there's a number of them, you know. There was even the recent uh, fucking the one about the magic school, but he uses his fists. That was like airing recently that I watched a couple episodes of. Like it's a pretty common trope. But again, I eat it up every time. I love it. Again, all of his moves seem to be associated with dancing and flowers and that kind of thing. So this one's called Lily. We have Chrysanthemum at some point, and then um, the, the last one's called something as well. Again, you're, you're very in touch with nature as a character, right? You're very... <laughs> you're very grass gym leader. But um, again, in contrast with the fire that we keep bringing up, which is Togami. So you know what that means, right? They're incongruous. At least at some level. So is that going to be expressed? We're going to have to say. So yeah, this technique was meant to snap the sword. And he's like kind of surprised there. <laughs> His surprise isn't at like the technique of the sword or anything. It's it's that he can't snap it. <laughs> so again, that's a weird sword because it can't be snapped in two. Again, it's one of the Shikazaki 12 swords. Of course, it's going to be fucking tough. 
Like, but it's it's not like any sword he's ever seen. Is the point again? Like, 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 yap, 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 all about this sword, and then he's just like, eh. <laughs> like he's kind of listening, but not really. Yeah, again, the, the Shikazaki Giza was a swordsmith, but also he dabbled in the occult and alchemy. Again, we're going to see this because he's got a connection to the family, right? This will be way future stuff, you would think. This is when Togami enters the scene just as, uh, as Shishika says he's going to shatter the sword. What do you mean shatter it? We need the friggin' swords. Don't shatter the swords. Stop trying to snap them with your fucking daffodil technique. If I brought it like that to the Shogunate, that would make me commit... Harikiri. Sure, okay, I'm beginning to believe this shogunate line a little bit more rather than you just acting independently. Didn't you listen to a single word I said? Not really. It's not like I said I'd accept the request anyway. Again, dialogue just, again, generally here pretty good. Don't you understand the monetary value of things? I understand the monetary value of things. <laughs> so please don't smash this sword. Just good. Because, again, he's like a thief, ninja guy that, that, <laughs> that was originally motivated by money. Again, just makes sense. So Shishika says that he's going to end it now with his technique. Just make sure you do it with a cool move, because I'll write up a report about how you capture it. I'll need something something to catch the reader's attention. Fourth wall stuff, right? Like novel. Like, oh yeah, I'll need something when I write, write the story of this great journey, right? Very aware of storytelling. Nisioasin type stuff. If you destroy that sword, the story will end at chapter one. Again... Aware that this is chapter one. Aware that in the next chapter will be chapter two. Aware that there's going to be 12 chapters. Lots and lots of stuff, right? Are you writing a book? Fun. Very fun. Again, they were distracted that whole time. He put the sword back away, and now he's going to use a technique where he throws a bunch of shuriken and then steals uh, steals Togami away. Yeah, you're no match for me if I actually use ninjutsu. You're very noisy. Again, it's all setting up, right? Here he is. He uses fucking bullet seed or something. Surprisingly enough, the, they actually go into his arms, but seemingly don't affect them very much. Again, I think the whole thing is the arms operate like swords. They're about as strong. Of course, if something's sticking into it, it's not going to be not painful, but it's not the end of the world. He's not going to need, like, these all stitched up, right? So now we get Togami turned somewhat damsel in distress in a way that I don't really love, but I think it's necessary for getting motivations where they're supposed to be. Also, it, it turns into, like, like you turn into her, which leads to one of the best jokes of the episode. So I, I see it as a necessary evil to get to where we need to go. So Komori's got her tied up here, and they have a little bit of a chat about how legitimate your motivations are and how legitimate Shichika's motivations are and all sorts of other stuff. Like this whole fall for me lesson that you're trying to get him to pull is probably not going to work. Now that he knows the knowledge as well, you have Togami just like taunting him. Well, kill me then, right? Well, he deliberately missed with that shuriken attack earlier. He wants to keep you alive, at least for now. And yeah, he intends to torture her when he returns, but first he wants to troll her even more with the fucking transformation magic stuff. And yeah, we're wanting to, you know, use her knowledge as well, right? Maybe intending to torture the knowledge out of her. Yeah, what if I change my appearance to that of yours? This way, even that Kyotoru guy will let down his guard. Okay. Of course, this doesn't go how you think it's going to go in a pretty funny way. And yeah, the, the most sadistic part, after I kill him, maybe I'll transform me into him and then kill you or torture the information out of you or whatever else, right? Again, you probably know more specifics about where the swords are rather than what you said before just in the house. I originally betrayed you for money, but even were it not for that, if I had known what kind of person you were from the start, I wouldn't have worked with you. Even that invitation just now was just so I could work with you again, and then betray you again. So again, this is what has me confused. Is she operating from some distrustful place, that she wasn't being legitimate the entire time? Is this what we're indicating through this? I don't know. Is that, am I meant to know that? I don't know. And again, that leading to the most obvious line of the episode, there's no one in this world that would stand by your side, and then of course we ended with the whole, like, confession, I'll stand with you, blah 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 blah, I'm going to hang out with Shichika for a bit. Like, completely debunking that line in totality, right? This guy is honorable enough, right? And <laughs> stupid enough to not betray you. But once that woman has set his eyes on him, it was too late. His luck had run out already. Huh. And again, like, the <laughs> pretty telltale for me to realize what's going on, considering, like, this running animation and this stupid smile. Like, this doesn't fit the character at all. And maybe subconsciously he's thinking the same thing. But again, he's only ever seen, like, two other people in his entire life, his dad and his sister. So 
if he sees anybody run up and try to surprise him like that, of course he's going to kick them in the fucking stomach. And again, if this was actually Togami, she would have been split in two. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. It's kind of fortunate that she didn't operate like this. Now that I look, oh, it is Togami. Like, he didn't even notice, right? And then, oh, you're not split in two, so you must be Komori instead. <laughs> That was close. If it was her, she would have fucking died. This is beyond the boonies. This guy's an animal. Funny. Very funny. Do you want to be used by her? Didn't you think there was something strange about her story? Why does the shogunate suddenly want to collect Shikizaki swords after all this time? That was because they fear a revolt? That is indeed the reason. Correct. However, don't you think it sounds too convenient? The shogunate today doesn't hold the same reverence for the Shikizaki swords that the shogun Q did. They're far more pragmatic. Ultimately, collecting up the swords this time is just a means for that woman to gain recognition. Togami the Strategian. It's nothing but a move on her part to gain fame within the army as a general director. But yeah, she wants to raise even higher. Don't you know what it means to doubt someone? Not at all, because he's only ever lived with two pretty trustworthy people. That young woman will use any dirty tactics she needs to rise to the top of the system. Raw strength isn't everything. When we first met, she terrified me. There's ambition in her eyes. You can sense her willingness to sacrifice anyone and anything for her goals. She was perfectly willing to use the money we cause too. And she's merely using you as well. And again, very obviously taking on the form of her and putting on these evil eyes as he's saying it, right? There's no way I'd follow that woman. Where do you think her ultimate aim lies? At the right hand of the Shogun. The current Shogun is getting old. He's going to retire. Thus, I want to be at the right hand of the next one or maintain the right hand of the current one once he does retire and blah, 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 blah. There's some kind of manipulation that she's doing with the system to try to get up further. Is this true? Is this an uncharitable view of what's going on? Will this motivation change from time to time? Is this a little legitimate motivation at this point? Does it have more to do with the family stuff that we saw at the start of the episode? All will be revealed in time, I think. And of course, talking about ruling the world, the same way that she presented ruling the world to Kyotaro, the, you know, in that conversation before in the house. I threw away my name and my family, all for it to end on this island. So, okay, uh, Let's, let's fucking try to figure this shit out. I threw away my name and my family. So, you were originally part of the rebellion. You were the princess there. You threw away your name and your family to join this side of the conflict. The current, like, shogunate, like, joined the order instead of the rebellion. As kind of pieces in a larger plan to maybe fulfill your family's wishes and rebel. Or make the country go a certain direction or, or, or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. We're going to learn more, I think. In case you don't know, my head isn't that great. So saying stuff like this doesn't really get through to me. So you're trying to, like, appeal to my sense of, like, my anxiety as it pertains to her, that she might be deceiving me. But I don't even get what you're talking about. I'm too dumb. Yeah, that woman is the daughter of the leader of the last rebellion, Hida Takahito, that we saw at the start of the episode. If things had gone better, she'd be the princess in her castle, ruling over the entire country. Maybe she still wants to return to what she considers her rightful place. I can already see it. It lies within my grasp, as we see this eye return again, which seemingly only comes up at certain moments. Father's dreams, father's regrets. So, like, yeah, again, carrying that family baggage into it still. But for what purpose? What was the purpose of the rebellion? That's what I really need to see if these motivations are pure. She was willing to ask for help from her father's enemies to collect those swords. True. It must be clear to you now what she's planning. Revenge. I should have been able to avenge father's death. Again. Okay. But then that puts it in con conflict with Kyotaru, right? And that whole clan, because they're technically responsible for the death, but only un under the direct orders of the shogunate. I wonder who she's going to blame in the end. Is this a is this a relationship here between not you, but the real her and you that is doomed to fail in the end? That girl she watched as her family was killed at your father's hand, and her hair turned white. Even if that was the only possibility to ask the person responsible for my father's death, even if not that, to depend on his son, even though I'm the son of her enemy, maybe I was wrong to rely on Kyotaru after all. Or Kyotoru, I should say. Yeah, I guess, like, considering her rebellious roots, right, it could be said that she's not being fully 
<laughs> she's not being fully honest with everybody at every point, and that's why even the ninjas feel a little bit slighted by her original motivations, especially considering their scale, right? To get revenge. And then we get this to like to turn into like a genuine mirror match. Like, I'm just as good as your body right now. Like, it got copied over. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I even have an advantage over you because you're somewhat hurt from the shurikens before. Sure. But the one thing you didn't consider is that my body is crap with swords. So you try to use that special sword over there, but my body's better than that. And this body isn't used to swords anyway. Is there anyone else who knows Togami's secret? There's no way I'd just give away such intriguing information. So the only one that'll know such a secret is you. So if I finish you off here, then that's fine. Nobody else will know it. And then this guy goes for the Hofuku Zeto. But again, the Kyotoru men don't have any skill with the sword. Thus, I'm going to use my ultimate secret technique. The reason it sounds so generic is it's an ultimate move I only came up with yesterday. Probably the standout piece of animation of the episode as well. This like segment where we do seven different strikes in the same sequence which plays out in fast motion by the end as we see it here yeah just cool ass stuff i don't know what to tell you that's a shichika hachi retsu sure i don't know about hachi hachi's eight right i don't know japanese is weird but of course sh shichi's seven isn't it or Nana, depending on your persuasion. <laughs> Look at what state I'm in now. And from a samurai bloodline, before my appearance becomes any more embarrassing, I've got to... Wow. And then, yeah, she's in some kind of precarious bondage type situation. There's no way I can lose to rope on tree. Turns out you are. Oh, so that's the eye he was talking about. Okay, the eye that only comes out at certain moments. At least it sparkles in quite a pretty way. Aww. Yeah, and then, I mean, he saves her and then is really earnest about it. It's not that I want money or that I've been lured in by Shikizaki's swords. I don't have a shred of obligation to help the Shogunate either. I've just decided I want to help you. I've fallen for you. Look, it worked. Your plan worked. <laughs> Good. But again, okay, now I see a little bit more. The motivation going forward, or at least the conflict, is going to be how honest are you going to be with you, considering how dumb and lovable you are, your fucking golden retriever-ass boyfriend, right? Is this going to blossom into something real on both ends? Like, you just have a pure family-based motivation at the moment, but could that transform into something else as we continue? What is your feeling to the Shogunate as we go forward? Would you want a full-scale rebellion, especially considering what happened to your father? There's intrigue going on, along with the general conceit of the swords and finding new characters and blah 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 blah. Surprisingly enough, Nanami still approves of this decision, despite knowing somewhat of the deceptive nature of it. I don't really care about the actual basis for your journey. If that child has found a reason to leave this island, I approve of it. He's been isolated for 20 years, it'd be simply too much of a waste if he didn't accomplish anything. Just so you know, it's not going to be a simple journey. Of course, we have the Maniwa cause, as well as the Sapi, the Sabi Hakuhei, of course, um, the guy which was set up before. On top of that, there's other monsters, it's not going to be simple. You truly care about him, don't you? I have no worries in trusting him to your care. I'm not such a kind woman, right? I haven't fallen for him. I don't have these genuine feelings yet. I'm, I am still using him. Is this going to be an element of self-hatred to this, right? Of hating yourself for your motivations going into this, which were not so pure, right? But again, Kyotoru is seen kind of through that. At least a little bit. Or Shichika. I don't know what, which one we're going for yet. Then we go through this last section with the four directives. Don't break the swords. Understood. Protect me. Even though our objective is the collection of the swords, if I die, it'll all be in vain. The third directive, protect yourself until we collect all 12 Shikazaki swords, dying is unacceptable. And the fourth, protect yourself again. But this is me being considerate of you. It's you as a person rather than you as your purpose, right? And then turns away, sun sun, sun sun, sun sun, sun sun. Basically. Don't die, the road ahead will be harsh, but you mustn't die. I won't let you say you can't. Hurry up and let's get it. Very casual, I love you here at the end of the episode too. Love me as much as you want. Huh. Very, very interesting, right? So, I love you. No, I love you back. Love me as much as you want. It'll be interesting to see where this goes going forward. I have a way better grasp going through the episode a second time. Very happy I did it. It was very funny how I kind of followed it through it again and fell for the same story things, even though I knew... So I'm like, wait, she can't be, like, the Shogun thing, because I remember the last scene. But again, I was a bit muddled. Again, it's very dialogue-driven. It's got a lot of terms that aren't very natural to me, considering the time period, so... We're, we're rocking with it. We're trying to get there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what this last shot is of, of you. I don't know what that's about. But anyway, we get this shot of all those different people there as well. Probably going to be 
um, some people that we're going to fight along the way. Ending here with the ED, which wasn't particularly unique uh, visually, but of course I'll read the song. The flowers caressed by the drifting waves are so fragile and small. Fragile and small? Flowers? <laughs> An ephemeral, abundant fairy tale. The, the, the song here is like pretty cool. I like the kind of uh, vocals towards the, like this portion of it, just after that opening line, like kind of auto-tuned and, and twisted in weird directions. Sounds pretty cool, but also very fantasy. At dusk, the early moon, red dyed moonlight blooming, life along with soul on a steel body. Okay, I mean, yeah, again, makes sense, steel body. Put on a vow, the flower that pierces the eye, Protected, withered, and still. Blooming while imprisoned in a glass bottle, a single flower melting a ghostly past into the dew. The butterflies drawn to the water of purification describe a fleeting, drifting daydream fairy tale. Sure, whatever you say. Lots of stuff about eye, lots of stuff about flowers, lots of stuff about oceans and drifting, and I can see how these are all connecting into various aspects already. Like your eye, association with flowers, the water that they're even on right now on, on the boat. He was on an island before. Lots of stuff. And then previews at the end, which I'm not really going to have another look at, really. All right, this is what I've limited up for my Google Doc for right now. Again, we start with the flashback. Kyoto Ru's leader, Mutsue Yasuri, as we see in the start, with the crazy hair, stops the rebellion single-handedly. That is Hida Takahito's rebellion, destroyed, leaving his daughter Togami to pick up the pieces, at least what we've been told right now. The current shogunate is scared of Kyotoru's power, or at least was 20 years ago, exiles the family to an island. Uh, Mutsue dies one year before Following back to the story where Shichika and Nanami are the only inhabitants, Togami visits to get Kyotoru's power to offer herself in kind of... She wants his power to collect swords to do stuff with it and offers her own love as the motivator there, right? She needs 12 powerful swords. Ninjas have some. Monsters or demons may have some other ones. Some bloke has one called Hakuhei Sabi, which you may need to keep an eye on. Either way, she needs Shichika's help to find and take them and blah, 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 blah. There's a conflict generally brewing around Togami's motivations in all of this. Is it merely for revenge? Is she using Shichika? Is Shichika just naive and trusting in this way? Or does, she, does he see through it? What's the dynamic going to be there? Again, he's already said, I love you. What's she going to say? Is there going to be some genuine feelings forming there? What's going to happen? We're going to have to wait and see. That, that's my setup for right now. But yeah, once I got a hold of the story, seems pretty compelling. Um, and again, the production's pretty nice. Very wordy show, but uh, I don't mind that at all. Love me some Nisio Sin, and I can't wait to see what other... Um, twists and turns we have to throw at this. Either way, I'm going to clock out for today because that was a that was a whole bunch. But um, but yeah, it was really fun. I'm going to do this next week, probably at a pace of one a week, you would think would be about right. Hopefully not needing to clarify as much story stuff next episode. And, you know, I'll have a general idea of the premise, which will be nice. Either way, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy watching the series as we go hope you enjoy sticking with it and that kind of thing just some show sure stuff so if you like the video consider liking the video if you like the video and you want to see more consider subscribing to the channel comment below anything you thought about the episode anything i could do to improve my presentation comment below i'm doing follow for follow on twitter so follow me on twitter if you would like me to follow you back and the discord join discord love discord 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 and yeah i'll catch you guys next time for some more katana Gatari goodness starting next week so yeah i'll catch you then thanks for watching and ciao, goodbye. <laughs>